Moneybag Yo is one of the hottest artists coming out of Memphis. His recent album, A Gangsta's Pain, went number one on Billboard when it dropped back in April and sold over 110,000 copies in the first week. But behind Moneybag Yo's success is a dark past that includes allegations that the rapper switched up on his own gang to achieve fame and success. Let's take a closer look at the rise and career of Moneybag Yo and how he got to where he's at. Moneybag Yo is from South Memphis, an area known for crime and violence. He's the cousin of Crunchy Black from the legendary 3-6 Mafia and was well known in the city before rapping. He was raised by a single mother who struggled to put food on the table, so the rapper got sucked into the street life from an early age. He dropped out of high school around age 15 and took to hustling full time to support himself. He had his first child around that time, so he had to find a way to put food on the table and back then, rap was just a dream. But the street life would catch up to him quickly and in 2011, someone tried to take his life while he was at a family picnic. The shooters knew where he would be because the event was something his family did every August. Luckily, he wasn't hit, but he did end up getting arrested and his entire family saw the kind of life he was living. This incident inspired him to hustle even harder with his music and he dropped his first official track, F You Pay Me, later that year. He started focusing more on his music and would take the street money and invest it in studio time and music videos. He started dropping mixtapes every year, including From the Block to the Booth, October 20th, and Relentless. But he started to see success with his 2015 mixtape Federal, which was full of hood anthems that gained him the respect of the city. He followed up a few months later with Federal Reloaded, which was released on his very own record label, Bread Gang Entertainment. He started getting booked for shows and making real money off music, so he decided to go even harder. His music started spreading outside of Memphis to other cities in the South and Midwest, and he was on his way to becoming a major star. But even though he was starting to make some money from music, he still had one foot in the streets. In March 2016, he hosted a release party for his next project at the Maserati Club on Highway 70 in Mason, Tennessee, only to have it raided by the cops. Police confiscated 10 loaded guns, a bulletproof vest, cash, and drugs. 28 people were arrested in the raid, some of which were affiliated with gangs like the Bloods, Crips, GDs, and Vice Lords. A crime alert now from Tipton County. Drugs, guns, and gangs are off the streets tonight after a major law enforcement operation. WREG's Michael Quanda reports this all went down at a concert for a Memphis rapper held in Mason at a place called the Maserati Club. A lifestyle of crime that deputies say led to 28 people being locked up on Sunday after law enforcement barged into Club Maserati off of Highway 70. Moneybag was quickly learning that running the streets while trying to start a legal business was not a good idea, but at that time, he hadn't built a big enough name for himself to make it off rap alone. Not long after that, one of his close friends, Elo, was killed. Elo was one of the main people who encouraged him to start rapping and leave the streets alone, so it was a major loss to Moneybag as he was getting close to finally achieving his dreams. Elo wasn't the first homie he lost to the streets, as his man Sleepy was also killed not long before. These back-to-back -back losses convinced Moneybag that he had to continue grinding and he would name his next project Elo, Everybody Lives On, after his dead homie. But his hustle would start to pay off and he would attract the attention of Endless Entertainment, a label and marketing company that would help him promote his next project, All Gas No Breaks. This helped put his music on the radar of Yo Gotti, who was one of Moneybag's biggest inspirations when he was coming up. But even though Moneybag was attracting the attention of one of his musical heroes, he didn't get starstruck and signed right away. He and Gotti would form a relationship first and build up genuine trust between them before Moneybag would officially sign to CMG. This brought Moneybag to a new level in his career as CMG wasn't just well known in Memphis, they were an international brand with connections at the highest levels of the industry. It seemed like things were finally starting to take off for Moneybag and he could finally leave the streets alone and focus on music full time. But just because he made it out the hood doesn't mean he was safe from street politics. Many people in the city started to talk down on him for signing to Yo Gotti, a rapper from North Memphis. The north and south sides of the city are known to beef with each other. Memphis is a city well known for gangbanging, with nearly every large gang in America having a presence. Crews from the north tend to beef with those from the south, so Moneybag signing to an artist from the other side was a major violation of the street code. But Moneybag took the risk of going against his own hood to secure a better life because he was tired of all the beefing and street drama. He said signing to CMG was a way to finally leave it all alone for good and create a better life for himself. So he signed on the dotted line, even if it turned his hood against him. After signing to CMG, he had to leave the city and would return only to visit family and take care of business. He was already on his way to being a major star, so there was no reason for him to return to his old hood where he knew there would be problems. Moneybag would get sucked right back into the drama after one of his old friends accused him of selling out. In 2020, a recording was released to the internet of a prison inmate named Stupid Duke claiming that Moneybag was a sellout and that he could never come back to his hood. So what's really going on with you and Moneybag? Uh, money bag crosses the line, you know, it's forever, he smoked for life, you know, he did a song with a dude, killed one of the homeboys, 
He got his face on the, on the TV cover. All of them got his name tattooed on them. He just did some foul stuff that you can't never come back from. So, you know, it's smoke. He used to be your mom, and he did a song with dude to kill your mom. So, you know, this for hell. This song ain't going to never stop. So, was he young ma from the beginning? Yeah, he was young ma from the beginning. He got his tattoos on him. Yeah, he young ma. He from the neighborhood originally. Stupid Duke and Moneybag grew up together and used to be part of a crew called Young Mob before he was famous. But after Moneybag started blowing up and getting the world's attention, he switched up and forgot all about his day one homies. Duke said that instead, he clicked up with the ops and left all his old friends back in the trenches. That's why he can never come back to the city and it's on sight if he ever tries to return. Moneybag has defended his decision to sign a CMG and leave Memphis by stating that the issues between North and South Memphis is more of a rivalry than a beef. No one from CMG ever marked or disrespected anyone from his old crew, it's just that the two sides have a history of not liking each other. It's not like he jumped ship to go break bread with people who killed his homies, he just saw an opportunity to get away from the streets and took it. Sounds pretty reasonable when he broke it down like that. Only thing is, that Moneybag wasn't entirely telling the truth. Back in 2010, Yo Gotti and two others surrendered themselves to police after being involved in a shooting that took place in the parking lot of Level 2 Nightclub on Thanksgiving weekend. The shooting started after a verbal altercation between Yo Gotti and another Memphis rapper named OG Boo Dirty and six people ended up getting shot. As it turns out, OG Boo Dirty is from South Memphis and grew up with Moneybag Yo. He also happens to be Stupid Duke's brother, which is why he felt the need to air out Moneybag after he blew up. So the beef did go a little deeper than just North vs South. Blood had been spilled and it was clear that Young Mob didn't rock with CMG and vice versa. There's even a video from back in 2013 called Get Em G by OG Boo Dirty that is a Yo Gotti diss. Moneybag can be seen in the background, proving that he was well aware that there was tension between his hood and CMG. After all this came to light, other dudes from Moneybag's hood started dissing the rapper and called him a sellout. This prompted Moneybag to release a track called Thinking Out Loud in 2020 where he addresses the situation. On the track, he claims he never had any bad intentions, but if his people feel a type of way, it is what it is. He even suggests that he sent Stupid Duke some money right before he started talking to the media and he was really doing it all for the clout. If that wasn't enough, a dude by the name of H.D. White, who claims to be the rapper's dad, also took to the internet to accuse his son of selling out. He posted a picture of himself and Moneybag back in the day, hanging out with his old crew, along with the caption, Before money, when everything was cool, now he don't know us no more. He also followed up with another post where he says, Yo, people will watch you struggle, go help somebody would never help them if the shoe's on the other foot, and then say you did wish me happy birthday. F*** you and your birthday. He's referring to a Moneybag Yo song where the rapper says, My daddy called me on my birthday, didn't even tell me, he just asked me for some cake. It's also worth pointing out that HD White is also a rapper and has never been featured on a Moneybag Yo song or vice versa. It does seem pretty whack that Moneybag would blow up and then leave his day ones behind. But then again, you don't know their relationship. Maybe they were trying to hold him back and weren't supportive of his career, so he had to cut ties to better his own life. Then once he blew up, they tried to join in on the success and he just wasn't with it. For now, the beef has mostly stayed on the internet and hasn't escalated to real violence. But in September 2020, someone may have tried to shoot at him. He was standing outside the Aria Resort and Casino in Las Vegas after celebrating his birthday when shots were fired in his direction and one of his girlfriend's homegirls was grazed by a bullet. Breaking news overnight, a shooting outside the Aria. Police say a group of people near the valet got into an argument. At least one person fired some shots maybe into the air. A one woman though was injured. She was taken to the hospital, later sent home. Police say the person who fired the shots is not in custody. The shooting is still under investigation. By the way, this is the second shooting on the Strip in less than a week. Saturday, two people were hurt after a shooting at the Paris. Moneybag denied that he was the target of the shooting, but it does seem suspicious. It seems like as long as Moneybag stays out of Memphis and doesn't add gas to the fire, there isn't much his old crew can do to get to him. He's now a platinum selling artist with a number one album and has plenty of money to hire armed security. Although Stupid Duke was released from prison earlier this year, and with a name like that, you know he has to be a savage. So, whether he'll attempt to make a move on his former friend, or let the past be the past, is yet to be seen. 